Welcome back to RBR guys, I'm Raz aka Mr. AMG and today we are checking out the SL43, a car that gives me massive anxiety but also piques my interest because this is a car where they've removed their famous V8 and instead replaced it with a four cylinder unit. So today our job is to find out how much emotion and how much usability remains after removing the V8. So to do that we're going to test how well the car is specced, all the details, we're going to see what it sounds like what the dynamics and the drive is like, and finally, what the open top experience is like and the overall package. As you try to figure out why on earth this particular car exists and why AMG have made it. So let's check out the brand new AMG SL43. So guys, today's episode of RBR is sponsored by returning sponsor, The Ridge, the company that redefined our expectations of the wallet. And they're back with an absolutely awesome new addition, which is the first ever pure leather Ridge wallet. Now I'm gonna open these up, let's see what the leather ones are like versus the standard one. So guys, we've got two versions of the Ridge leather wallet here. One is the brown leather version, which is gorgeous, and the other is midnight black. Let's get this open. Oh wow, that is lovely, look at that. And this has had 18 months of development. It's the same great design as our classic. There's my awesome forged carbon with the red details, which is such an amazing version that they did. But this brown leather, this has been designed so it patinas as well, really well. You can replace the screws. Lifetime warranty, just like your other Ridge products. You can fit your cash in here. And of course, this has the same great RFID blocking technology to protect your cards from wireless thieves. Pop in my cards into the leather one as well doesn't bulge out of your pocket like a standard wallet either. So guys, that's the new Ridge leather wallet. I can't wait to see what it looks like when it ages. It's got that great 99 day test drive is all that you can take. And the same lifetime warranty because Ridge are so confident about their products. Use the link ridge.com forward slash RBR or my code RBR. You'll get 10% off your order. It's the perfect gift for yourself or someone that you care for because it is long lasting and it's gonna be used every day. So a huge thanks to Ridge. Thank you guys for supporting our regular sponsors as well. Now let's get back to the episode. The SL43 seems like going to McDonald's and ordering a cheeseburger, asking for extra salad and removing the patty. Yes, it might be healthier, but are you really gonna enjoy the meal at the end of it? <coughs> That's the question that we're posing today because of course the V8's gone and it's been replaced with a four cylinder unit, half the cylinders, does that mean half the fun? So guys, here is your SL43 finished in sun yellow. I've been trying to drive this car for well over a year. It was announced prior to the C43 that we'd already driven with the same engine setup and there was no press drive, no press cars available. And because of that, there are no reviews really out there at the moment. So I really wanted to tackle it and try to understand what this car is like because the AMG SL V8s as your Mr. AMG and AMG customer and addict are my favorite new AMGs on sale at the moment. So emotional and they really magnify that brilliant V8 in the best of ways in a little AMG hot rod. So what on earth happens to that car when you remove the V8 and you put in a four cylinder engine? If you're getting violent flashbacks of the new C63, that is exactly what we're here to unpack today with this car. Now in the past, we had entry level SLs. But in the past, the SL was made by Mercedes Benz. Now it's made by Mercedes AMG. So in the past, we had the SL500 and the SL350, and indeed we had the smaller car in the SLK and the SLC. Now you don't have those anymore. Now we only have the SL. So AMG have made an entry level model for this car to fulfill the role that those cars used to fulfill. And that is of course the car that we're looking at today, which is the SL43. Now, because this car is made from the ground up by AMG, it shares a lot of the great stuff from our V8 SLs. For example, the body shell, which is an intelligent material mix of aluminium, magnesium, and composite fibers to build a shell that is more rigid than the previous AMG GT Roadster and helps to keep things lightweight as well. Our suspension comes from the SL55, so it's AMG's ride control suspension with, it's, it's a steel based uh, spring setup with lightweight coils, and it's got Comfort Sport and Sport Plus in there as well, which is great. We also have the benefit of the active aerodynamics that you find in the V8s as well. So the uh, active air panel flaps on the front and you've got 
a underbody that is very much covered up for good aerodynamics and our active rear wing, which is multi-stage as well to help things out. The other thing it shares is the great new Z-Fold roof. This is of course a soft top, which I think is great because it mimics our AMG GT Roadster of the past and the 300 SL. This you can use up to speeds of 37 miles per hour or 60 kilometers, and it goes up and down in 15 seconds, which is great. And it's 21 kg lighter than our hardtop roof of the past, of course, which is great. Now, of course, you know the engine is different, but the other thing that this 43 doesn't share with its V8 brothers is the formatic system. This is actually the only rear wheel drive SL that you can get, which is interesting because it should make it more of a driver's car, but as you'll see later, not really quite the case. So we have a rear wheel drive system in this instead rather than the formatic. Then of course, the big topic, which is the engine, out goes the V8. And instead now, rather than the 43s of the past where we used to have a Mercedes built V6, we now have a four cylinder engine that's built at AMG and shared with the full fat AMG. So this is the M139L. So it's longitudinally installed in the car. Um, and this is shared with like the C63, the A45S, etc. It's built by one man, which is why then we have our engine builders plaque here. This one built by Bajrush Isufi, which I'm guessing potentially Turkish, maybe. If I'm wrong, please someone correct me in the comments. But I'm really happy that this gets a hand-built AMG engine because it gives it that much more AMG DNA in this, which is really important for the AMG customer. You don't want an MB built engine in this and you haven't got that. You've got a proper unit shared with some full fat AMGs. Then additionally, we have this, which is the first e-turbo to come in a production car. And this is an electric turbo. Let me explain what this is. And this is the first time it was ever brought into a production car was before the C43, remember? And this has an electric motor that sits within the turbocharger. Let me give you a closer look at this. This is where it sits. It's integrated directly on the turbocharger shaft between the turbine wheel on the exhaust side and the compressor wheel on the intake side. And it drives the turbocharger before the exhaust gases get a chance to spool up. That's where you'd normally get lag. So you end up with what is a really responsive engine, essentially. We also have a belt starter generator or a RSG within the 48 volt system. And this gives an additional 14 brake horsepower in those scenarios. Altogether, ignoring that extra 14, we get 381 brake horsepower, 480 Newton meters of torque and a zero to 60 of around about 4.9. That will test later. All sounds a bit sluggish. We'll see what that's like later on. Now, one thing that this car does share with the V8 is the nine speed multi-clutch gearbox, which is great. Unlike rivals, we're not using a torque converter, so we should get some snappy gear changes. And then because of our lighter engine and the lack of the formatic, we have a car that is the lightest of all the SLs. So it's about 50 kg lighter sitting at 1810 kilos, which I know is still not light. So SL only in name really. But again, this should affect our drive later on. So we're gonna see what that's like. Then we come to design where the 43 does actually benefit quite a lot because the majority of it is using a lot of what makes the V8 versions great. It does have a unique front end. I think that's a really good looking car, even in 43. You still benefit from the lovely power domes on the bonnet, so none of that has been you know, dumbed down for a 43 version. You've got a front end that's still very kind of Mercedes AMG and DNA. Yes, these are a little bit softer, but you still get you know the full on grill. An interesting change here is that the lights are not quite as dark in their look compared to the 55 and the 63. And that's actually the same on the rear as well, where you get this kind of brighter strip going through the middle, where it's all darkened out on our V8 versions. But yeah, I think it looks really good with the soft top. I'm not opposed to the round pipes at all. I think they look great. I just wish they made better sound, but you will see that in a minute. And I'll show you the sound section. Yeah, the side view is lovely. So AMG GT, so kind of SL in its look. I don't take the 911 comparisons at all. People just don't know AMG history well enough and just make the wrong assumptions. Um, I think that looks really good. Love these wheels. Remind me of the old AMG GT mixed in with a bit of AMG one because of the aero element. I think that looks really good. You got the upgraded brakes in there with the yellow calipers that we'll talk about in a minute. I like these wheels. In the Premium Plus in the UK, you actually get the SL55 wheels which look really good. These are 20 inches and yeah, I think they frame the car pretty well. But you can cheat as a 43 customer. You can get something called the V8 Optics Pack, which basically gives you the front end 
of uh, the V8 cars, which is cheating really. And it is, in the UK at least, 3,500 as an option. Now, do you really want to go for that? And additionally, you can even get the aerodynamics package, which gives you know more flicks and stuff around the car. I'm not sure that's money well spent in the 43 in my opinion, but if you want it, the option is indeed there. Now the SL43 in the UK starts at £108,000, which many people might see as problematic because the base Carrera 911 is a thousand pound cheaper in the Cabriolet version, um, but you do get the type of engine that you're expecting from it. Our car today is the Premium Plus model, which comes in at 118K, and this obviously comes with a lot more options. Though our car today is a little bit of a strange one, particularly for UK guys, not so much internationally, because this has a package on it that you guys get in Europe and in the rest of the world, but we don't get in the UK, and that's the AMG Dynamics Pack. This gives the car active engine mounts, it gives the car race mode inside, we get the electronic limited slip diff and a few other goodies within this, including the yellow calipers. And that's a nice package to have on a car like this because it will make the 43 as good as it can possibly be, but a bit unfair for you UK lot because this isn't a car that you can actually buy here. Though it does look good, and certainly the yellow calipers is something that I would absolutely recommend uh, just doing as a retro mod later on in your car because it would just give it a little bit of oomph. As a car to make a statement, whether it's 43 or 53, this thing really does look the dog's nads, even in 43 form. So guys, that's your SL43 um, in terms of specs. Now let's head inside because the interior that you get in this gives you a lot of bang for buck. It actually separates it from the rivals a lot as well. And I actually am a big fan of it. The SL takes more than a few cues from S-Class on the interior. That includes things like the door handle, which at night is lighted. You get the light carpet on the floor as you walk in as well. And then the interior, before you hop in, it is a gorgeous, gorgeous looking sports car interior. And we are gonna dive more into that now. And you get the AMG welcome screen on here and in the front as well. One more click, and then you'll see the AMG welcome screen on our drive select units down here as well, which is really cool. Now, as far as gorgeous interiors go, the SL has it nailed. And luckily the 43 doesn't dumb down just because it's a 43. If anything, this looks absolutely identical to the SL63 that we recently tested. So really good. I think actually I'd go as far as to say that this interior is my favorite out of any modern Mercedes because it adequately merges analog elements with digital elements. While the analog elements, brilliant things like the vents here, which are like turbine design, um, we need to go for a better ambient lighting color. Hey Mercedes, change the ambient lighting color to blue. Okay, I'm changing the color. Of course, the great MBUX voice assistant is standard in the SL as well. Um, so the color within the vents is great. That's analog. The kind of the hood that we have around our driver zone, I think is so good because it stops glare from happening. It's a sunny day today and we can see the screen perfectly clearly in front of us, which is great, but it's also very driver focused. You know, it's not like an iPad hanging in front of you as I've gotten used to in my BMW M3 and other Mercedes cars. So that's great. Um, indeed, the center console, though it's lacking buttons, which I would have liked, it's nice and V8 engine shaped or knacker duct shaped as well. Um, that's brought over from the AMG GT. So that looks great. I think all of that element, you know, a lot of nice structure in the interior, very SL, very AMG GT, and that's why I really like it. Within the 43 as well, you do get the proper AMG steering wheel. This one, for some reason, has the carbon steering wheel, which we did not even get in the 63. So like I said, this is a very early spec 43, which is why it's on press fleet and it's not quite what you get in the UK. But it gives you an example of what you could mod in your own car, which is nice. The carbon wheel is gorgeous. It's really nice to use. You also get the 12 o'clock that you don't get in the normal leather one. And as standard in the 43, you get the brilliant AMG drive select unit where you can change your driving modes on the fly which is really good. And as I said, this car is dy dynamic package plus with the race mode. And the SL43 is the only 43 where you can control the exhaust flaps as well. MBUX itself is a great system with large touch points. So it's quite easy to use. In the AMG, of course, you get specific readouts for your vehicle. So what's happening with um, your suspension, how much the wheels are turned. You've got the lovely engine readout screen, which is cool. The old IWC chronograph, and I found going into the settings, it was really actually quite easy to find the things you want. For example, we've got our ambient lighting in here, which is easy to customize, multicolor or otherwise seats, massage function. There's a whole load, which is nice. So all of this is great. And though it's a big screen, 
it's actually quite easy to use. And if you don't want to just touch, you can use instead the touch functions on the steering wheel. They're a bit hit and miss. I don't like them. We need to have buttons back here instead, which I hope we will one day. You do get these buttons at the bottom, like your fingerprint scanner for Mercedes ID. And then of course the roof function. A tip here is if you want to fold the roof down or up, don't use the silly smartphone swiping thing. Instead, just double tap your roof button here. And that is a much better way to do it rather than holding a silly on-screen button um, for 15 seconds, which you might let go of while you're driving. Then the drive zone, absolutely brilliant, as you know, in AMGs, you get a unique screen in the 43 that is also in the 63, which is your Super Sport display. We're just going to turn the car on for that. Super Sport is a unique screen just for AMGs, and you've got a lot of AMG specific content that you can have in the middle of the screen here. You also have AMG track place, which is a little bit more geared towards the track, as it says on the tin. So that's your interior. I'm a big fan of it. One important part of this interior is, of course, the seating arrangement, which now for the first time in an SL in years, is a two plus two arrangement. Very much kind of 911 format though, made only for someone up to 1.5 meters. So it's for kids. For someone like me, I think that's great. Uh, as a family man, I love to have my kids with me in a car that I enjoy. Will I enjoy this car? Who knows? Um, but that I think sets the SL apart compared to where it was in the last gen where it was a bit of a lost car versus the AMG GT. But overall, I think that's a great interior. Now in terms of boot space, we've got an electronically operated rear lid, which is good haven't had that in the past. Boot space is tight, okay? There's not a lot of space in there. The boot space, even though it's quite lacking in the SL, I was able to fit my Recaro Pram, a cabin size bag and a little backpack. That was, however, using this feature here, which sets this thing back, but then you can't really fold the roof down. Either way, in terms of practicality, the fact that I could fit that pram in there makes me happy because otherwise the whole using with family thing kind of goes out the window, doesn't it? And stored back here is your manual wind cover as well, should you want to use it. But yeah, in terms of practicality, a little bit of a struggle, probably similar to living with a 911. Now the final and missing part of this equation is what does this car sound like? Let's jump in now, we're gonna do a motion start, give it some revs as well, and see what this sounds like versus the other 43s and of course the V8 as well. All right guys, let's give the 43 a start. We're gonna do an AMG motion start. How do you do that? Press your start button here and then hold any one of the paddles down. That's your AMG motion start. It's okay, nothing to write home about. Let's put the car into its freetest mode, which is race mode, and let's give it some reps. That's rather disappointing to me because the A35 facelift sounded absolutely brilliant when revving it on idle. And I didn't get any of that from this. Why? I don't understand that. How's it gonna feel when we actually drive? It might be a better sound, it might not. Let's find out now. Let's head out and see what the 43 is like finally on the road. Alright, SL43, we're in comfort mode, pop the exhaust on. The first thing I said to you guys when I drove both the 55 and the 63 is listen to that rumble. And the first thing I'm going to say to you now is listen to that lack of rumble. It's not particularly unexpected, but driving around slow is not really the SL43's strong suit in terms of providing the driver with a bit of enjoyment. It is nice that the 43 does have an exhaust flap because you do get amplified sounds from the speakers coming in but it's nowhere near the reason that you pick up the keys as it is with the SL55 and the SL63. So really, as we always do, let's keep it fair. As we always set the scene first with a launch control in a performance car, and this is an AMG car, even if an entry level one, let's begin by going into race mode and we're gonna do a launch start in the 43 and see how much, and see what kind of speeds we come to. Not bad. That took some going to get to 60 versus the V8s. So that was a speed of 4.5 seconds. 
tiny bit better than the official time, but it felt pretty much as slow as it is. I mean, this is a heavy car, 1,800 kilos, rear wheel drive only, not even 400 horsepower. That's kind of what you expect. Nothing like base 911, where it's a pretty lightweight car and you still get a very decent launch control out of it. Now, this being a entry-level proper AMG, we're gonna put the car into Sport Plus. And that's what we're gonna use for our initial road drive. Speed-wise, it always feels that way as well. It never feels super quick. The 55 and the 63 feel so quick, like perfect for the road, especially the 55, but the 63 is bonkers fast. This never gets to those levels, and the horsepower figure just doesn't lie in that regard. Now, in Sport Plus coming into this, my hope was the way that the V8 SLs amplify that V8 versus other AMGs with that engine, like you could really hear the V8 more in the SL than any other AMG on sale today. I was hoping the same would be true of the 43, that while we're not massively enamored with the four cylinder, hopefully we can hear a bit more. The pops and bangs won't feel like little bubbles popping in the background, and you'll just get a bit more of what you're lacking in the other 43. Sadly, that is not the case. If I downshift here, for example, I perhaps even say that the C43 that I drove and even the C63S with the four cylinder sounded a little bit better than this. So I'm a little bit disappointed by that. I was expecting a bit more from an SL because the SL, as I said, it's really delivered in the past. Now, one might say there were other entry-level SLs in the past, and you know there was the 350 and the 500, and did those sound that good? Well, yes, they, they bloody well did. They sounded very, very good, those particular engines, uh, both the six and the eight-cylinder. Um, so really, this is a step back. As we know, GT Roadster had the V8 in all of its forms, even the entry-level. Even the SLC, to be fair, had a good range of engines. Um, yes, the V8 was gone in the end, but you know, a decent V6. This ain't it, Chief, when it comes to sound. So immediately, that is a very large part of the fun of the SL55 and the 63, just simply crossed out for the 43, that the sound experience simply isn't there. This. Then we come to dynamics while we're here in Sport Plus. The steering is nice, as it always is in newer AMGs. Of course, we haven't got the formatic system in the front, so it feels a little bit sharper, actually. I don't know how much of that, though, is the Dynamic Plus package. We've got the active engine mount and we've got the electronic dip on the rear. I don't know, because the SL63 felt, you know, better, if anything. In fact, even the 55, while perhaps transitions from one coordinate to the other were a little bit numb um, because of the formatic, otherwise felt really good in that car. That tiny bit of weight reduction, which is, what, 50 kg, it's not the most in the world, is it? Um, I mean, it does feel a little bit lighter, but not significantly where you're going, wow, this is a sea change and what a driver's car this is. Much like there being little difference between a Carrera S and a Carrera 4S, I really don't see the difference here between a Formatic and a rear wheel drive. The things about performance that are nice, however, is the really responsive engine. Thanks to the E-Turbo, the new engine is just brilliant, just generally in terms of responsiveness. All it needs is a bit better sound. So that element is great, you never get lag. You know, it's, uh, it's really, really responsive. And the other bit that comes directly out of our 55 and 63 is the nine-speed gearbox, which just doesn't delay at all. Really fast shifts um, up and down. So that's nice, it's a nice pairing of a good gearbox and a very responsive engine. All of that, the tech heavy side of this, you know, the F1 focus, as they say in the press release, is good. Apart from that, dynamically, I'm not saying that it's incapable. Um, the steering is good, the steering feel, as always with AMGs, is really good. But when you get the gearbox going and the engine responding, they're both great together. I don't miss rear wheel steer from the 55 and the 63 in this. It handles perfectly well without it. But to me, it just doesn't feel like the car that you'll be thrashing around in that way because it lacks that emotional element. The suspension, it's okay. Again, with the 55 and the 63, you kind of forgive them any kind of harshness because they feel like sports cars. This one is leaning more into being a luxury car because you haven't got that emotional side. So you're harsher on it when the suspension just isn't as good or the road noise isn't as quiet. Similarly, 
where you kind of forgive the SL55 and 63 for being slightly less dynamic than the 911 Turbo because of course you get that massive hit of emotion, the AMG V8 is so prominent and it's just a fantastic supercar roadster experience. You don't get any of that in this. So you're actually a lot harsher towards the SL43. And my brain immediately says, why on earth would you bother and why wouldn't you get a 911 Cabriolet, even a base Carrera would be more exciting than this emotionally for a sports car drive. And then what my mind also comes back with is the Carrera, despite obviously being more emotional and more dynamic, doesn't benefit from the luxury side of this car. This entire aspect of the interior experience is actually really, really good in the SL43. With this car then, more than with the v 8 I think I'm more inclined to want to have the roof down and enjoy that other side of the SL that you're not actually that bothered about in the V8 cars and you're kind of like, you're happy to keep the roof on. In the SL43, I'm kind of thinking, I'm in a roadster, I might as well enjoy that roadster element. So let's see what the car is like with the roof down. Well, one thing is you do hear a little bit more of that exhaust, um, if it's just like the rumbles and the kind of the little pops, which isn't a bad feeling. So yeah, all the more reason to want to put the roof down and get a little bit more sound. It's obviously nice to see the sky around you as well, really appreciate that. But then you're not wanting to go super fast, you more just want to kind of cruise around with the roof down. And that's what this car is, the SL43, I think. It's a cruiser, it's not a bruiser. But the question then we inevitably ask ourselves, does it do enough as a luxury cruiser? What do you guys think? Is there enough in terms of how good this interior is, how the car looks outside and inside? Does it do enough to justify its price tag against its rivals? Has he got some strong rivals out there at the moment? Uh, particularly, I keep coming back to 911, which is less of a focus with the V8, as I keep saying, and more with this, because you've dumped so much of the emotion. I don't think I understand this car. It should have at least had an inline six to give it that much more AMG emotion, because that's what SL to me is all about. I've seen a lot of these cars on the road, in the UK, like a lot more than I've seen the V8s and the type of people who've been driving them from what I've seen in my personal experience have been older people or ladies. Um, and they've been older ladies to be fair as well. So in that sense, obviously it seems to be selling fairly well here. And that seems to be the demographic that Mercedes perhaps might be happy with this car serving. Um, but then it's not really an AMG product, is it? I'd like to see a six cylinder version of this, where it's a SL53 that's providing the emotion that this car is sorely obviously lacking. To me, where you think the V8 versions were its brothers, it feels more like a distant cousin to those cars. And I think my original analogy of going to McDonald's and getting a cheeseburger and removing the patty was actually accurate because I've had the meal and I'll be honest, I'm not satiated and I'm craving a big fat V8. If you're not as carnivorous of a petrol head as I am and you want a car that's just gonna cruise and not bruise, then this is a really good looking car with a really good engine and gearbox combo and some great luxury inside. But for the AMG addict, I'd go for the Big Mac. So guys, I hope you've enjoyed this full review of the SL43. If you have, please, as always, do like and subscribe to RBR. In totally non-Mr. AMG form, I'm going to put it down to comfort mode, and I'll see you guys next time.